Welcome to LA Football Network. We are joined here by the one and only Trevor Sikama, PFF NFL Stock Exchange. Trevor, thanks for joining us. How you doing, my man? I'm doing fantastic. This is my first time out here for Super Bowl Media Week, and so it's a wild ride. I mean, it's just like every, it feels like everyone in football media is here. I go five feet and I see one of my Twitter friends, and so obviously, like on here with you guys, which is cool. But uh, yeah, just trying to enjoy the ride, man. I love it, Ryan. And I want to talk to you about obviously Senior Bowl. You're sporting the Florida Gators. You have to, of course. Talk about some prospects. Talk about the Chargers and the Rams. Yeah, and some UCLA, USC kids, but. Right off the bat, you were at Senior Bowl. Yep. We saw a lot of footage from you there. Give us kind of your top overarching takeaways from Senior Bowl. Who are the guys that stood out, maybe in a good or a bad sense? Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many players that I think really helped themselves, and we figured that that was going to be the case because Jim Nagy put together a really good roster this year. I mean, the Senior Bowl was always a great roster, but going into it on paper, I said this is probably the most talented roster that I've covered in Mobile. Wow, and, it ended, and it ended up wow. being – the case and so I mean if you just want to start in the trenches I mean I thought that uh, somebody who you guys know very well Layatu Latu yeah. one of my favorite players in this draft he had a fantastic two days before sat out the last day due to injury but I actually went up to him before the practice and I was like we good because I was because I told him I was like you're one of my favorite prospects in the draft I don't, don't need any, do this to I don't me. need anything happening and he was like no 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 some guy just kind of hit my quad a little weird and he's like I just didn't want to push it so I was like okay that makes sense you've put out enough good tape so yeah. I thought he was great offensive line guys I thought were great as well Jackson Powers Johnson from Oregon um, Christian Haynes from from UConn Fuaga Tyler Guyton Ty- yeah Talise Fuaga I mean just it, it was. There were so much high expectations about so many of these players, and they absolutely all lived up to the billing, it felt like. So a lot of good players in the trenches as well. You know, Tavondre Sweat on the defensive side of things, defensive tackle. Texas. Um, you know, I, I just we I think a lot of people are going to talk about the quarterbacks specifically. And even though you know, Nix and Penix both there, no, though neither of them really, like, grabbed that top quarterback there title by the reigns like I did felt like they were fine I, I don't think it, just because they didn't have this incredibly impressive weekend that doesn't mean the narrative to me changed on either of those guys I think they can both still be first round caliber picks but just honestly anywhere you look it felt like on that senior bowl there was somebody who was really incre- in, in, improving their stock and, and having a good week so we you talked about the players that impressed you're a part of the stock exchange there's stocks that go up there's stocks that go down Whose stock went down, in your opinion, from the Senior Bowl week that you just came away just a little bit disappointed in what they brought to the table? Yeah, um, you know, if we want to stay with quarterbacks, I don't know if Joe Milton's stock went down, the quarterback from, from Tennessee, but any event that he goes to, so many eyes are on him because he's got one of the strongest arms that you'll ever see. Yeah. I mean, this is somebody who can throw the ball 80, 85-plus yards. And so whenever you have this level of arm talent to you, there's just kind of this, okay, well, it, is, is the accuracy going to be there enough? Like, can we really? Because all it's going to take is a little bit. Like, if you show me a little bit, I'm going to buy in. Enough. And it was just kind of a lot of the same with him. You know, a really powerful arm, some nice throws, but some other throws where it's like, man, you got to hit that in the NFL, like yeah. very consistently. So he was somebody that was I was a little bit disappointed about with. with. Um, Kalen King from Penn State, unfortunately, ah. he had an elite year as a sophomore. Yeah. Man, elite race. year as yeah. a sophomore. Hype for him. Yes, and and he, I think, you know, he's a What's young. What's the issue? Like, what is it? Honestly, man, like, it, it almost just feels like confidence at this point because that position, you guys know, yeah. is so... Mental. It, dude, it's so it, it's it's way more mental than people realize, and confidence is such an important part of it. I, I say this all the time, and the reason why I had Devon Witherspoon as my CB1 last year, you got to believe you're the baddest dude on the field every single time you step on the field when you play corner, yeah. especially when you play corner at the NFL level. And that includes... When you make a mistake, people talk about that short-term memory, all that kinds of stuff. When you make a mistake at corner, you got to be like, "All right, okay, may, like may, uh, yeah, he, he, maybe he got me, but it was like, yeah, luck, or like I'm gonna get him next time, something yeah. like that." Seat belt when it just overthrown. King, yeah. King, it just it just feels like I don't know, man. The body language, he just wasn't feeling himself, and um, I think that's also what we saw this past season. And you contrast that with what we saw the year before, and it was elite, very confident play. So this is somebody who. It feels like he's probably going to be a day three pick at this point just because of where crazy. he's at going into uh, the, the actual draft weekend. But he is somebody who you go, man, could be a major swing in the back, could be a home run. But I, those are two guys that I think come to mind that I was hoping to see a little bit more from. Uh, Tez Walker, I think, is another one from UNC yeah, where yeah. Walker was – Good at times, but like, man, you gotta catch football. Yeah, and man. that was that was such an that was such a disappointing part of the weekend is there were too many times when 
He had the opportunity to haul it in. He got separation because he's still a really good vertical threat player. He showed that in Mobile. But those are three guys who, man, I had a little bit higher of hopes for that just disappointed me a little bit that week. All right, so last one on Senior Bowl before we get to the Chargers and Rams and L.A. football yep. prospects in general. Uh, diamond and the rough guys, ones that have, like, Trevor's stamp of approval that maybe people – aren't really that high on they could be like day two day three guys the ones who bring crazy value that maybe when you go to the pff mock simulator they're there in the fourth fifth sixth seventh round you're like dude he's not going uh-huh. way earlier than that right right uh, aside from quinion mitchell everyone no knows. i mean Quinion. <laughs> there's no there's no like hiding quinion anymore exactly. i mean he might be the first cornerback off the board i'll stick with cornerback though somebody that i liked a lot during the summer max melton from Rutgers. This is somebody who I, I liked a lot going into the season. I think I had him CB5 going into the year, and I was like, I, he didn't grade like super well for us, but he didn't grade terrible. It was you know somewhere in the 70s, coverage grade around the 70s going into this season. And I was like, I just like the way he moves. I like the way that he approaches the position. It feels like he's very smart. He's always putting himself between uh, his guy and the ball. He's always, making, uh, he's always giving himself an opportunity to maybe cut passes off. And... I wondered if he had the long speed to really keep up at outside corner, which isn't, you know, if you're going up against a lot of good vertical threat players at the sideline, you got to have that that long speed. And I kind of questioned a little bit of that, but he played so smart. Maybe I like, maybe this guy could be a good nickel. I saw him at the senior bowl. They had him in the slot, specifically in the red zone drills where you don't have a lot of space to work with. You got to play tight up against guys. You got to have that quickness to be able to, uh, to really keep up with them, especially when they have those two-way go situations. You could be going to the pylon. You could be going to more towards the middle of the end zone. And I thought he played fantastic. And I was like, that's what I've been waiting for, baby. Hell so yeah. he is somebody who, good cornerback class, I just I don't think he's getting enough love. I think he has a lot of experience as an outside corner. But his skill set might be a little bit more toward the slot. You might be able to get the best of both worlds with him where, okay, maybe we'll play him in the slot um, certainly early on in his NFL career. Maybe we're in a situation where if a guy goes down, we need him to play outside in a pinch. He's got that experience to him. So Max Melton, I, I don't think he's getting enough love in this class. Ooh, okay. Max Melton, I like the name, man. Uh, Rams, they had such an impressive draft last year when you really break it down. Steve Avila turned into a very solid guard. Yep. Kobe Turner was like the talk of the third rounder later yep. within these draft classes. And you couple that with Kyle. Aaron Williams going the year before led the NFL in 100 yard rushing games. Les Need has got a track record and he's got, you know, his first round pick back for the first time in what feels like forever. Oh, and right? by the way, Puka Nakua. Puka, yeah, <laughs> by the way, just going to throw that in. Heard there. of him? Yeah. Yeah. Byron Murph or Byron Young. Byron Young think, for like, Tennessee. I think yeah. he led the team in snaps this past year, which is awesome for him to get that kind of experience. So. To get that many young players, in this, it just shows the track record Snead has as general manager. Mm-hmm. Where would you lean you know, for them in their theme of this draft? I've heard corner a little bit. I've heard some other yeah. positions. If you, Trevor Sikama, were in the room with Les Snead and he comes to you, hey, who do you think I should take in these second or third rounds? Who are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, this the organization's top class, yeah. right? And, and they, they win a Super Bowl for a reason. I think McVay is a wonderful head coach, and I think that you saw that this year. A lot of people did not expect the Rams to win many football games, but he <laughs> yeah. took a unit that was really inexperienced, really young. And when Matthew Stafford was out there, um, obviously the offense was good enough. I think the defense played well enough as well. And so when I look at the Rams, though, I still think they are in a situation where you are basically taking best player available at the premium position. So, Ooh. like, offensive tackle, pass rusher, lockdown corner. Obviously they got wide receiver figured out, but to me – Those are still areas, despite, like, you know, Byron Young getting a lot of playing experience and, you know, some guys in the secondary stepping up a little bit, having some of the offensive line figured out but not all of it. You're still in a situation where you're just looking at, to me, those three positions, offensive tackle, edge pass rusher, and and lockdown corner. And you're saying, whichever guy makes it to us where we select, who's highest on our board, we're taking that guy. Yeah. And so that's why I think you I think you narrow it down a little bit to those positions. And they're in a very advantageous spot, too, because every time I go through these mock draft simulations, there's always somebody of really high caliber at one of those positions that's left for them. So yeah. they're just, it's a good year for them to have their first round pick and, uh, and to be needing one of those positions because it's a pretty deep group in that regard. All right, so the Los Angeles Chargers, the other team in L.A., landed a pretty big fish, Jim Harbaugh. They go Heard on the him. tails of that. They get Jesse Minter from Michigan. Then they bring in Greg Roman. You could say they have more holes in the roster than draft picks currently. Uh, Joe Hortiz, the new GM. Mm-hmm. Lots of ways they can go. 
everyone talking about whether it's Brock Bowers or Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze right. at number five. But, like, in your opinion, given the holes that they have, they have the big pieces, right? They got Derwin, they got Justin, they got Keenan, seemingly, Mac, both, so you name it. What's your strategy for them in, like, the first three rounds, like the bread and butter where they have to land on these picks? Like, how would you go one, two, three? Yeah, I, I think when I look at their positions in need, I think that offensive weapon is one of them, and I use that word, you know, on I'm purpose that up. because, yep. right, I mean, it could be a wide receiver. They'll have the opportunity to pick one of, I believe, Malik Neighbors or Romo Dunze if they want to upgrade wide receivers Bowers. specifically. Or, right, you'll have the opportunity to pick Brock Bowers. Yep. So you throw him in there. So you just say, okay, elite offensive weapon. I think that's probably where they look yep. at number five overall. It just makes the most sense for the talent of player that they're going to have at that spot. You know, you could pick – I think. Interior defensive line is another area where they have to get a lot better, but I don't think you're taking, for as good as Byron Murphy might be, I don't think that you're going to take him at five. I don't think you're taking Jervon Newton. Newton at five. No, no, no. But if you trade down a little bit, then those guys start to come into play. But I think interior defensive line is one of those areas. You know, you got Leonard Taylor from Miami that you could take a chance on probably on day two. Devondre Sweat from Texas, I think, makes it to day two. Um, at least I, I think he should. I mean, like I like what he brings to the table, but he's he's so big, it's almost like, I don't even know if you're going to be able to get three down ability from him. He's almost like a specialized player just because I don't know if he'll ever be able to have the conditioning to do True. it. True. You know, I'm a, I'm a guy from Tampa, and I watched Vita Vea's development with the Bucks in freak. the first couple of years. Freak. Well, here's the thing. Yeah. He was he was, he was was definitely a freak when he was coming in. That's why they drafted him as high as they yeah. did in the top 12. But the first two years that Vita Vea was there was a lot of, like, reshaping this dude's body his conditioning his diet to where uh. he could be that big but also play as much as he plays yeah. and so people don't necessarily think of that about that part so that goes into defensive interior defensive line as well but i think that is an area they have to get better under staley it was sort of weird they didn't really emphasize it like they didn't really care about it as much and they're like okay well we're going to defend the pass a lot and we're, we're not we're really going to well and <laughs> and we'll kind of like invite you to run and it's like all right well you don't really have the guys up front in the middle to be able to do that as well as you thought, and I think he obviously learned that the hard way. So I think interior defensive line and then corner is another one, right? I think a lockdown corner is huge for this team. Again, you're not probably taking one at five, but if you trade down, that's now in the conversation. Some guys on day two, like a TJ Tampa from uh, from Iowa State, a Kamari Laster from Georgia, um, you know, guys like that I think could be in consideration for them somewhere on day two. If they go interior offensive line, specifically probably center because Corey Lindsay is most likely retiring. Yeah, right. Who is like a round two center or two that you're like, if he's there at whatever it is, 37, like sprinted it? Yeah, I think that there's a couple of guys. The center class is pretty good. Um, Zach Frazier from West Virginia is somebody who has had a couple of really solid years for them at center. He's one of the best center prospects in this class. I think if Jackson Powers Johnson didn't have the incredible senior bowl that he did, we'd be talking about a debate between the two of who's going to be the first center drafted. So I think just because of the nature of the position, you know, we see guys like Creed Humphreys as a second round picks, right? And, and Tyler Linderbaum still went in the first round, but people saw him as a, like a top five, top 10 prospect in that class. Right. He still ends up going, what was it? 25 to the Ravens. And so that's just the nature of the position. It gets bumped down a little bit because it's not seen as that important. But I think a guy that might be later on day two, Cedric Van Pram from Georgia. He was their starting center for uh, the last three seasons, ton of experience, really smart football player. And then he got some players who maybe haven't played center before that can. Uh, Graham Barton from Duke, I think, has the ability to play center. He's one of my favorite interior offensive linemen in this class. Flexibility, for um, sure. UConn's uh, Christian Haynes is kind of the same way. Like, he played guard the last two seasons at UConn, but he might be somebody who could be a good center for you. So those are a couple of the names that I think of on day two that, that uh, could be center selections or just overall interior offensive line selections for him. Yeah. Uh, UCLA and USC's got some prospects coming into the draft, obviously. Everyone knows about Latu and Williams. Who are some of the other guys you're t thinking of when you scout? We talked about the Murphy Twins we met initially yesterday. Yep. Yeah. Darius Muwasa has another name that comes to mind that was in the Shrine Bowl. Yes. You know, some of these different guys. And, like, Taj Washington, Brendan Rice was around here. These are also guys heading into the draft. Who do you like from those group of guys yeah. uh, heading into the NFL I draft? I mean, you named a lot of really yeah. great ones. Um, I, I, I like the Murphy Twins a lot. Uh, I think that they're going underrated in this class. You know, I think a lot of people focus on Laiatu Latu and, and what he's able to do as a pass rusher. But you, you turn on the UCLA tape and – it didn't take me very long to go, okay, okay, but, like, who's on the other side as well? Like, not that they're better than Latu, but, like, Gabriel specifically, I think that – I think Gabriel's handwork is a little bit faster than Grayson Murphy's. I think yeah. Grayson's a little bit more powerful. You can tell that Grayson – 
bases his pass rush plan around more of a bull rush and Gabriel is more of a like a two-handed swipe or like a club rip kind of a guy he's a little bit more of a one grab penetrator so very similar in body type they're twins obviously so <laughs> it's uh I, I think we looked at the shrine bowl like official weight roster and they were like one pound off and it's just like you guys are literally it's the like same. a spider-man right, right, right.